Hello there, everybody. No, just walking around in my back 40, so to speak. Actually, it's like a, a back four. But uh, under my favorite spot, my favorite tree, there it is. This massive, massive, old, gnarly, but still standing maple tree. Um, looking at the scripture passages that are selected for us to read on this sixth Sunday of Easter and they they all kind of they come together in a wonderful way the first lesson from the book of Acts first it was Peter now it's Paul who is called by the Spirit and directed in a in a very interesting way by the Spirit to go out beyond the edges of what we think are the good old guys, the good old boys, the gang, whatever kind of slang term you want to put it, the in crowd, those who have an in with God, with Jesus. Hey, it goes well beyond the select few of 12. It goes well beyond even those who have experienced the resurrection and were early Jesus followers. It goes well beyond that into a world that, that we've already seen with Peter, it touches the Gentile world. And now we're going to see that happen again with the Apostle Paul. And this time, it happens to touch a wealthy woman. Oh, there's two things that seem to be going against it. Culturally, woman. Um, even some of the harsh words that Jesus said about wealth. Someone who's rich. But no, the gospel reaches them as well. Touches their lives and makes a difference in the world. So... We who put our limits, our boundaries in there, uh, can't do that. Hey, that's even what we see in the psalm, Psalm 67, how this is a, a, a grand and, and glorious world that, that reaches beyond the boundaries that we've set for that message to go. It goes well beyond that. Uh, and we have that in our lesson from Revelation this week. There... Uh, another vision of the Holy Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. And once again, it's one that says it's very, very inclusive. It's just not the in crowd as you might think it is. It is the world, the nations. And this beautiful thing called the tree of life that you find in the new Jerusalem along the banks of the, the waters of life. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's the tree of life that has leaves for the healing of the nations. Could that mean forgiveness and renewal for the nations? Even those that, for instance, we as the United States have been at enmity with, and we who think that we have an in with God more so than other countries, yeah, that's, that's a form of Christian nationalism that, has a lot of false pride involved in it. We gotta be careful of that. We can't think that we're the best of all the nations. God doesn't, he doesn't play favorites when it comes to particular countries. God throws his love around to everybody. God brings that, that freshness and that renewal and forgiveness and love and caring and all that stuff to all people of the world everyone created in his image so there's no one country that's better than the other and you might say ah oh, wait a minute you talked about that in the old testament how his people were the jewish people israel hey wait a minute they were a select group but they weren't a superior group there's a difference there okay they were selected by god to bring the message so that everyone else might share in this bounty the blessings of god so, okay, you, you want to think that we're so much better than others, our, our nation, our United States of America? Then we got to act like it, especially if you're going to invoke God's name in all that. Uh, that that's kind of a, a silly thing to do. And it's also a dangerous thing to do because then you start creating God in your image instead of the image he wants us to be created in, which is his image, a loving, caring, generous, forgiving, reconciling God. Woo! Yeah, there's a lot going on in there. And what does that have to do with our gospel lesson? Jesus, Jesus about to um, go on the cross. 
He's just basically moments away from that in the Gospel of John. He's going to be crucified, and there God will be glorified. God will be glorified with His Son hanging on a cross? Yes, because it's in that moment that God's ultimate act of love is displayed for the world. A love that conquers even death, the greatest enemy. But Jesus tells his disciples in a speech that he gives just before all this happens, and he's saying, listen, I'm not abandoning you in this effort. I'm going to be with you in a way that's even fuller than you've ever seen. It's going to be the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the comforter, the counselor. He is going to be the one that that now will guide you in your life. And this counselor reaches out once again to all, to all those who put their hope and trust in God. Everyone. And the greatest gift that we get from all of that is peace. Peace in our hearts, peace amongst ourselves. And I think that's the basic uh, format that's going on here. The basic thing that he's talking about when he talks about peace, he's constantly talking about being reconciled to God and to one another all through the gospel. So that peace is something we can't experience right now, but it's a peace that will be ours forever. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we can, we can sit and, and talk about these things, but the important thing is we integrate them into our lives, into our walk as Christians in this world. So a Christian, no matter where you are, whether it's in the United States or it's in East Africa or if it's in an Asian country or, dare we say, Russia and Ukraine, I mean, it's hard to think that those are so-called Christian nations, but they are, predominantly so, they are. And we, we question that. And why? Because we say, hey, you can't be doing that. How about us? Do we ever look at ourselves and say, hey, we can't be doing this? <laughs> ah, All right. There's so, so much that we need to do as we gather together in worship, in Bible study, in, in, just in a coffee shop situation, we always take a good, hard look at who we are, whose we are. We belong to God and who we are. We're child of God, children of God, okay? We're his children. And what we go about in our daily lives in order to share the richness of the gospel with a world that at times is really messed up. Well, God's blessings be with you. What's not messed up is this this beautiful, beautiful scenery that I have all around me. I just love it. Even in the wintertime when everything's bare and you just see a lot of uh, brown ground and uh, snow covering it. But it is one awesome day as we glorify God in all that we do. Blessings be with you.